The people of Machias, Maine, in the New England region of the United States have used Internet to better the lives of their people using funding from the federal state governments and also the private sector. Let's find out how. Rural Maine is remotely located with houses far apart and buried in thick bushes, rocky coastlines, farmers, lobstermen and business owners. However, the area cannot be considered a profitable market for any big telecommunications company. But through the Broadband Technology Opportunities Program, BTOP, run by the United States government, Maine is deploying new and improved broadband internet facilities to connect community anchor institutions such as schools, hospitals, farms, and other businesses. The University of Maine, Machias, is our first stop, and the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Stuart Swain, doesn't mince words. He tells us how the school is benefiting from the use of internet. So you may be a student here at Machias, and maybe you'd like to be able to take a course that we don't have available here, but we are able to have it at one of the other universities in our state. Well, through connecting to the computer, you can log in, so for example, right here, we have, um, this is me logged in as though I'm a student, and I can access these different courses just right here on the computer. So we have uh, contemporary mathematics, or introduction to statistics, or introduction to psychology. And so a student will click on that and be able to pull up all of the course materials that the uh, information about the final exam and social psychology and all of the different materials are right there for the student to be able to get. So even if you're a student here at Machias, you're able to take courses from across Maine or even beyond. And what we've really wanted to do as a state university system is to be able to integrate all of our different learning opportunities so that students at other campuses can take our courses and our students can take their courses. The internet has just made all that possible in a way that in the past you would have needed to have driven hundreds of miles through the woods and the snow and whatever else to be able to get to it. To get more testimonies on how the internet is impacting positively on the lives of people, we visit another community anchor institution, the Down East Community Hospital. The president and CEO, Dennis Welsh, shared the experience of the hospital in administering Hi. treatment yeah, through the internet. Telemedicine provides an opportunity uh, to even uh, move that type of quick, uh, but effective, uh, safe, uh, and consumer-oriented healthcare to the front line. Uh, so uh, the emerging technologies out there is going to uh, broadband, uh, other types of technology are going to be absolutely essential to how healthcare is going to be delivered in the future. So it doesn't end there. Heidi Hinckley is the librarian at the Peabody Memorial Library in Jonesport, Maine. She also tells her story. Oh, it's going to open up a whole new world for them, I think. I, I mean, you know, they, they come in here and we have time restrictions on our computers here. So they're only allowed so much time on these computers. This way they have the unlimited month-long checkout, um, which can be renewed if nobody's on the waiting list. So I, they'll, hopefully they won't be misusing them and playing games on the computer. They'll be doing it for schoolwork and research and things like that, but I think it will just open up a lot of possibilities for the kids. But Maine is not all about the community anchor institutions. Situated in the New England region of the northeastern United States, it is known for its long maritime history, abundant blueberry farms, lobsters, and captivating landscape. And this has opened a stream of income for farmers and lobstermen in this rural area. But beyond serving the immediate community and filling up their pockets, these men want to serve the world and no better way to do so than the World Wide Web. <laughs> Dell and Marie Emerson, owners of Wild Blueberry Land in Washington County, attest that broadband has indeed boosted the efficiency of their enterprise. When we do ship our berries, you track them all the time, the, uh, FedEx. And we track the shipments and uh, we have people this time of year constantly sending us emails asking us when what the season is going to start and they're planning a vacation so they can come when they're at the peak yeah so that and then they Every can take they okay. then they take their berries yeah so so before then i mean how was how easy was it for you to 
um, uh, come to terms with using the internet? I mean, before now, before well, the of before we had the internet, we'd, we'd have to count on a sign on the road a couple miles away and hope that they would turn down our road and come see us. Mm. <laughs> that was it, really. And that was hopeful that they would find us. Now they know where we are and, it, you know, they can look us up on a, a GPS and, and get right here and they contact Dell and they know. And then when we ship berries, if someone can't make it and we ship them, then we can um, follow the shipments and we know when they're going to arrive. It, it's, that's all good for the Internet, you know. We ship them frozen year-round, so, and they contact us year-round and we ship them FedEx, next day air, most usually. So we, now it's turned... It's turned into a year-round business yeah, for us. So it's not just the um, during blueberry season. So. For the Hanscom family of the Welch Farm in Rogue Bluffs, who have been harvesting blueberries for several generations, they rely heavily on the internet to run their blueberry farm. Well, we've continued. We we're kind of new to the internet um, ourselves, but we've been using it to advertise ourselves through websites and um, Facebook pages. Um, so I'm learning how to. Uh, create and maintain a website. Um, I'm also able to find information um, that I need uh, about different ways that we might be able to sell ourselves, uh, different ways to advertise to people. Like for example, we ended up with tours mm -hmm. and they found us on the internet. Um, we've also, you know, we've started adding products so it's a great way to get those products out to people so that they know. So we're not just selling locally, we're actually selling further abroad because we can um, actually uh, get that information out to people. Um, my dad has actually used the internet to uh, repair tractors and to buy equipment that he needs um, because he, uh, he can go online so we don't have to worry about traveling two to three hours to get a piece of equipment. Um, I've also uh, am able to look up uh, like laws, regulations that might affect me as a grower so that we can actually uh, kind of make sure that we're doing all the laws correctly so we don't get in trouble when they show up. Our mission in Machias will not be complete without a visit to the seaside and the seafood general store where the freshest seafood from Beals Island is sold. We are taken round to see a variety of seafood offered by the main waters, which include lobsters, soft shell clams, periwinkles, whelks, and main scallops amongst others. We have a quick sit down with Mr. Carver, whose grandfather started the business, and he tells us how the internet has exploded his business beyond rural Maine. Uh, the difference would be compared to throwing a firecracker or going to a 4th of July celebration in New York City. It's been an explosion, a huge one. Oh, great. Uh, we had an audience of local people and people that we actually touched ourselves. And we went from that to basically having a worldwide audience. Uh, we've uh, integrated a, a, a web page uh, which people can get to know us without even talking to us, which is very important in our line. Uh, if somebody's thinking about doing business with us, they want to know something about us before they even call. So they can go on our web page and find out basically everything they want to know other than hearing my charming voice about AC Inc. Uh, They'll have confidence that we're here, that we're real, what we are, what we're about, what our products are, uh, before we even touch base with them. We actually had to start with a basic computer course for me as well as many of our employees. Uh, I actually knew what email was, but we had employees that didn't know what email was. So we started out with the very basics in a classroom. Uh, got familiar with computers, got taught the basics, and then went on to an operating program for the business. Once we got the operating program for the business, we've now added a website, uh, Facebook page. We don't tweet yet. That's next.
The non-profit Down East Institute for Applied Marine Research and Education in Beals Island is another outstanding feature in the rural town. The director of research at the institute and a professor of marine ecology, Brian Beale, tells us how the internet bridges the gap between the institute and the local businessmen. Our development and our outreach is really dependent upon our ability to communicate with these people. And in a state like Maine that's very rural, we have uh, connectivity um, and internet uh, wants and wishes and needs uh, that allow us to communicate, send data to, the, to our, our um, um, the folks that we interact with and that we work with, and vice versa for them to be able to send data to us. Many of the fishermen are, are learning how to use the internet and, and through some of the projects that we've done with Axiom, we've been helping them learn about internet access and how to communicate that way. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's one of these scales where it's, the, the learning curve is, is not really that steep and they're, they're, they're pretty adept at, at being able to do it. The, the only thing that they need help with is typing. It's also good in terms of sharing information, whether it's graphs of data uh, or whether or not it's actually series of numbers where I have fishermen that are measuring green crabs in different parts of Maine for me and they're taking those green crab measurements and they're sending them to me and I'm, I'm making the graphs and developing the visuals that I can return to them and say, oh, well this is the trend and, and here it is and so they can see it. They just see a series of numbers that I translate into into a visual for them. Machias, Maine may be located in a rural area, but its inhabitants have been able to break the barriers that exist between them and the world, and the key figure in ensuring this progress is Axiom Technology. Led by Susan Corbett, Axiom has received over $3 million in grants and awards from public and private entities in targeted at deploying new and improved broadband internet facilities to underserved communities. Called the goddess of the internet by her folks at the Washington County, Susan's IT firm houses a classroom with visual capabilities, mainly for adults' computer lessons. Axiom is considered a last mile broadband provider. Um, we started in 2005 and we put broad broadband to areas where there was no broadband. Um, Washington County, which is the county that we are located in, is about 2,500 square miles. Um, it takes about four hours to drive from one side of the county to the other. Um, at the t in 2005, there were only two towns with broadband capability. So we started to build out a wireless network. Um, in 2005 and today we have about 90 access points providing an umbrella of coverage over the 2500 square miles. Um, we're also a professional services company um, where we provide um, support to small and medium businesses. We have design and implement networks, we work on computers that are broken, we help design um, uh, websites, we provide VoIP services, voice over internet, um, anything, any technology that a business might be in need of. Um, not because we necessarily, you know, plan to do it, but because we're the only IT company in this 2,500 square miles, and so we provide services to any business. And over the years, we have built a very robust um, computer skills program, a digital literacy, digital literacy skills program, providing, um, uh, teaching people how to use the internet. Um, focusing on all of the major programs, all the Microsoft programs, uh, introduction to computers, how to build a website, um, how, to, how to do Facebook for business, how to use a QuickBooks financial software, anything that's going to help an individual or business um, learn how to use technology. We um, provided services free of charge to the farmers, the fishermen, their crews and their family, about a hundred people and that group achieved about 13,000 learning hours in a two-year period of time. So they had a very good comfort of technology by the end of the program. When we reached the end of the program, we were approached by a private foundation who really liked the work that was being done in this region, and they asked us to submit a proposal to continue to do digital literacy here in Washington County. We were awarded a two-year contract to um, provide those services, and in the two years, which ended at the end of 2014, um, we reached about 1,600 adult learners, 
We held the classes in 43 locations across the county, and it included about 250 businesses. And now the final piece to the puzzle, the three-wing binder executed by the main fiber company. Chief Executive Officer of the main fiber company, Dwight Allison, tells us more about the project. Uh, we are a owner of an 1,100-mile fiber optic project that was built with uh, stimulus funds from the federal government, an 80% grant, and uh, the other 20% was private investor money. We built the what's called the Three Ring Binder project uh, for lease to internet service providers to help expand broadband in rural parts of Maine. And we have 1,100 miles um, from the southernmost part of Maine to the northernmost part of Maine. As someone from the University of Maine who is looking to connect their campuses, so it was laid out by them. It was a project that was conceived of and discussed with a number of internet service providers in the state in conjunction with the University of Maine. Um, it was, uh, a grant application was submitted by one of those internet service providers and the federal government awarded the grant. And then the grant was turned over uh, to me to start a company uh, and to raise the roughly seven and a half million dollars of private investment that was needed to go into it with roughly a 25 million dollar grant from the federal government. The three ring binder was built between 2010 and 2012 and is now online and available for um, primarily um, larger companies to lease fiber so that they can then provide internet services to homes and businesses, uh, community anchor institutions, schools, libraries, courthouses, um, fire departments, etc. The project would not have happened without um, government support. It just, it would not have, it, nobody would have built this. Um, and even with that government support, um, and the 80% that they paid for the hardware to start then hooking up customers, there's still subsidies that don't necessarily come to us but come to our customers to help some of the most rural areas. Um, the main schools and library network is, a, is an example of where um, federal subsidies come into play and this is true across the country.